Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the CSR's hashtag STEMIFLIX and chill with the CSR. My name is Rihanna Mohammed. Um, I'm taking over from the beauty queen, Unati. So she was with you on Monday and Tuesday. Um, she hosted the first two episodes, so I'll be hosting this one. And today I'm joined by CSR geophysicist, Dr. Michael Van Skur. Welcome, Michael. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. So the CSR is commemorating National Science Week this week. Um, it ends tomorrow. And the goals of National Science Week really are to encourage young people to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, um, and to continue getting strong grades in, in maths and physical sciences and continue choosing those subjects as they progress to their high schools. So before I hand over to Michael, um, if you have any questions, please type them into the comment box on, on YouTube and um, we'll be posing those to Michael so that he can answer your questions. Over to you, Michael. Thanks, thanks, Rihanna. Um, yes, I, was, I was asked to, to, to give some background on, on my journey um, in, in science. So I'll go right back to high school um, and I'll, I'll maybe start with a with an interesting uh, note. Uh, when when I was in, in, in well, grade 10, 11, 12, I wasn't really sure exactly what career I wanted to follow. Uh, the only thing that I knew for sure was that I wanted to do something related to physics and mathematics. Um, I also thought about other things uh, like ecology, um, microbiology even, but it, it always came back to the maths and physics. Um, and then fortunately for me, I, 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 was, I was lucky enough to, to obtain a CSR bursary for, for geophysics or exploration geophysics as it, as it was called at the time. Um, and to, to, to be quite honest, when, when I got the bursary, I wasn't even 100% sure what, what geophysics meant, you know, what it entailed. Um, so I first had to do a bit of reading, and then I realised, but okay, this is this is sort of a, a integration of maths, um, physics, and and earth sciences or, or or geology, and immediately it 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 sounded like exactly what I was looking for because it 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 gave, you know, it gives you the opportunity to get into a field that that's more applied, uh, that's not your typical academic physics or, or mathematics, uh, because I wasn't sure where where that would be headed. Um, so, so the the geophysics was actually quite a quite a cool um, door that opened for me, if I can put it that way. So then the the, the first surprise came. I had to to move from Cape Town, where I grew up, uh, to to Pretoria because the only two universities at the time that offered courses in geophysics uh, were WITS and and Tux. So I came to 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 University of Pretoria. Um, my first well, to, to do geophysics, you basically have to study a BSc. Uh, you, you start with a basic B, BSc with uh, subjects like mathematics, physics, uh, geology, of course. Um, and then the rest is sort of, well, chemistry also. But then from your second year, you start specializing a bit more. Then then you have to make the decision, do you want to have physics as your second major? Um, do you maybe mathematics, you can even do something like computer science or applied uh, mathematics as, as, a, as a second major. But, but then in your third year, you end up with geophysics or exploration geophysics as your, as your primary major. Um, I opted for the physics. Um, I also did some applied mathematics um, uh, courses, but mainly uh, physics and, and geophysics. You also do a lot of geology, of course. Um, as you move on in, in from second to third year, you do a bit less uh, pure geology, uh, less of the uh, chemical geology, if you can put it that way, more of the physical uh, geology, uh, economic geology, um, exploration geology, that type of uh, thing. Um, and then, of course, you have to do a fourth year, um, like most science fields, to, to become a, a qualified scientist, um, you have to do a fourth year honours degree. Um, and my honours was then um, in, in, in pure geophysics, exploration geophysics uh, was the name of the subject at Tux. Um, and then after that, I started working at the CSR. Um, I started in a, in a unit that did mostly groundwater and environmental geophysics. Um, and after about two years, there was some restructuring in, in, in the company and I was moved to the mining group. And that's basically where I've been ever since. 
um, I started doing mining geophysics, in mine geophysics, um, and that's about 25 years ago, um, and I'm still doing more or less the same thing. Um, I did complete a, a MSc in the meantime, part-time, um, and also a PhD in, in geophysics. So that's basically my journey. Thank you, Michael. Um, so we obviously just finished a very interesting uh, panel discussion now um, with the colleagues in the mining cluster. They spoke about the modernization of mining. And um, it just got me thinking as well that, you know, the skills and professions now required in mining, when we talk about the modernization of the industry, there's obviously a need for those with skills in ICT, in software development, etc. So what does this mean for geophysicists specifically? How does the role of a geophysicist evolve when we spoke when we speak about you know the sector modernizing? Um, good question. I, I think if I could go back thirty years now and I could change my um, subject. <laughs> Too bad choices. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would probably knowing what I know now, I would probably have maybe gone for something like computer uh, sciences or, okay. or more of the applied mathematics. Um, geophysics is very a very uh, data uh, intensive field. So, so we generate lots of data sets um, and to be able to manipulate those data sets and process them and interpret them. I mean, we, we do have custom software and, and we write our own little tools to, to, to work on, 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 the, on visualizing the data and, and processing it. But I think if if one had a, a strong background in in, in programming, coding, um, data science, uh, working with big data sets, even statistics, um, that would be really very helpful for 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 the modern day geophysicist. It's quite interesting because yesterday the CSR hosted a career day um, at uh, our Pretoria site, and one of the teachers actually raised their hand and she asked, you know, there's so much of interest in ICT, um, is it still relevant? And it, I think the, um, uh, the one of the researchers that answered yesterday actually found that quite strange because like you, you just said, and like uh, our colleagues earlier just mentioned as well, that there is such a big need for people with skills in ICT specifically because we're talking about modernization of industries as well as we spoke speaking obviously about the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, and then um, I've got a question over here. So Michael, once one gets to tertiary institution to a university, which degree is applicable to do uh, if one wants to become a geophysicist? Uh, well, as I said earlier, um, when, when I started studying, there were only two uh, universities, WITS and Tux, that offered courses in geophysics. I think at the moment it's actually only WITS. Okay. Um, so to, to get into geophysics, you would have to start with your BSc and then uh, select your, your geophysics specific course as your primary major and then work work around that. I think uh, the, the universities would probably tailor the course specifically around geophysics. So they would, I think, dictate to a large extent what subjects you need to take in first and second year. But there, there would be some some degree of freedom to, 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 to put together your own sort of personalized course, if I can put it that way. OK, interesting. So I've got another question over here. Um, describe what it's like underground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always joked uh, when I went underground quite often at a stage, I said the, be the best thing about underground is actually coming back to surface to, to see <laughs> the sun again. No, it's it's it, it, it's it's scary at first um, because it's it's new. It's 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 mm -hmm. a dangerous environment. Um, but once you get there, and and, and most mines are you know, are, are, uh, well ventilated and, and made safe. And, and it's actually quite a pleasant, well, pleasant is, is probably a strong word, but once you're underground and you start doing your thing there, it, it's actually not that bad. It's You, you get used to it um, and it is humid. It is uh, dusty and sometimes a bit noisy, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's probably not much worse than, than any office environment at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so we often hear or read about miners getting stuck underground. Right, so how is geophysics addressing this problem? Okay, that, 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 that's possibly not your 
typical geophysics uh, problem. Uh, we, we've been approached in the past uh, where, where, where this has happened. Um, if it, it, it depends, all depends on the geometry of the problem. If, 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 if there's a rockfall and a, a bunch of miners are trapped behind a, uh, you know, a blockage in a tunnel, um, and you, for example, need to know, you know, how thick or how wide is, is that blockage, you could use your physical methods to scan that 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 uh, part of the tunnel to see you know how far ahead is is, is the cavity or, or the the little excavation where they may be sitting. Um, but normally, yeah, normally for 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 trap miners, it's it's not your typical geophysics problem. So basically, what you're saying is you can see through rock. Yes, we can see through rock. <laughs> how cool is that? That's the coolest thing ever. All right, Michael, so I've got another question over here. Um, so what are the different areas within which a geophysicist can work? And at which point do you have to decide? And then also, how easy is it to change direction during your career? I think up to honours level, it, it's pretty st uh, standard, if you like. Um, you would complete your honours degree and then then look for work. Um, and 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 normally a lot of your your specialised training will happen on the job. So you could, for example, uh, once you qualify as a geophysicist, you could go work for for the oil and gas industry, uh, where you would do a lot of exploration offshore, um, looking at uh, typically seismic methods uh, used for 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 you know finding new new uh, gas and, and and oil wells. Um, and then you would probably have to specialize in seismic data processing. Um, and although you would have some exposure to, or yeah, some exposure to that in your in your in your studies, you would probably have to go undergo a lot of on the job training while you work for for that specific company. You could also go do exploration work for for mining companies. Um, the typical job there would be maybe up in Africa or or wherever there's exploration happening. Um, and you would then look for new uh, ore bodies, new deposits, um, using different methods. Uh, those okay. methods could be could be a variety of, of of different geophysical methods. You could also end up, sorry, you could also end up in in um, other fields like environmental geophysics, groundwater geophysics, where your focus would be to to uh, you know to map uh, aquifers, to map uh, pollution plumes, um, those type of uh, more it's more your near surface um, applications where you wouldn't really do any underground uh, activities. So you said that you started in groundwater, right? When you joined the CSR, but how did you find that transition to mining then? Um, it, it it was a bit difficult at first, uh, but mm -hmm. fortunately, your your geophysical methods are, are are quite versatile. So so if you look at one you know specific method, let's let's say uh, ground penetrating radar, it's not only applicable to mining problems. You could take the same tool and go apply it to 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 other surface problems for for groundwater you know mapping or, or whatever. Um, so once you understand your tools, you you can really apply them in in a variety of of settings. Okay, so which means that you can become a geophysicist and you can do quite a few things. <laughs> yes. yes, and you can see through rock. Coolest. Okay, so Michael, how is your work influenced by the fourth industrial revolution? Um, I think it links to to to, to the earlier question about you know. How, how, how one needs to change your 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 uh, how can I put it your 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 CV. Um, so there's a lot of focus these days on on data science, uh, big data sets. You know how you can better visualize data, um, those type of things. And and we've seen a, a bit of a shift in geophysics as well. The, 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 in the past we did surveys, we generated mm -hmm. data sets, and we gave those results to the client. And often you know, the, 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 the project would end there. These days, there's a lot more questions being asked. You know, what can we do with this, with this data? How can we integrate it with our other, uh, you know, uh, data sets? Um, there's, a, there's a strong focus on integration. People don't just want to look at your geophysical results. They want to see it in, in context, you know, of other data sets that they might um, have access to. I think that's, okay. that, that's the main thing, yes. 
Okay, um, I think we've run through our questions. Okay, sorry, there's one more. <laughs> so, Michael, what are some of the most important skills for geophysicists to have? To be successful in your career, what are some of the most important skills and characteristics? Um, two things jump to mind. I think one needs to be uh, very meticulous. So you can't afford to make uh, you know small mistakes when you when you process data. If you if if a mistake slips in and you don't notice it, it will you know manifest in your output in your results, and you could end up with uh, results that don't make a lot of sense or that are simply not not correct. Um, and the other thing is you need to you need to love working with data. You not need to. You must have a love for for things like looking at data through graphs or through images or whatever. If 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 that doesn't interest you, then then it's not going to be your field, I guess. <laughs> so I guess maths was also an important subject. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, uh, I think that's it. There aren't any further questions. Any words of advice to young people out there that are considering a career in mining? Um, I think we must always remember that mining go th goes through cycles. You know, there there are good years and there are bad years. But but it, it it's quite a quite a big um, part of industry in South Africa, especially. And it I think it will be for for many years to come. Um, so if you can just position yourself, um, you know, with your subject choices, with your studies, to to sort of be. Don't specialize too early. You know, keep your options open. Um, especially with things like math, science, uh, computer science, uh, programming, those type of things. Um, and there will be opportunities. You, you must just, you know, persist and, and, and the opportunities will come. Great. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Mining is not a sunset industry. There are many opportunities for careers in mining in South Africa. By the way, when I met uh, Michael a couple of years ago, I learned that he was an author. He authored a book on geophysics. Am I correct? Yep. Yes. So you can do a, a, a myriad of things. You don't have to only be a very serious uh, scientist at the CSR. You can pursue your other passions as well. You can definitely definitely become an author as well. Okay, so thank you, Michael, for inspiring young minds, young and bright minds uh, this morning to pursue careers in mining and to consider uh, the mining industry as well from, from various perspectives. So that brings us to the end of the third episode of Hashtag Stemiflix and Chill with the CSIR. Join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we have, we are ending the week, National Science Week with the Bang. We are having two guests on Hashtag Stemiflix and Chill. Two ladies, one is a science communicator and the other one is a biotechnologist. I look forward to speaking to you all again tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>